The Matrix Revolutions, conclusion to the original trilogy of Matrix films, although of course we have the fourth installment coming out in just a couple of weeks. This one was filmed back to back with uh, the second part, Reloaded, and they were both released in the span of just a couple of months back in 2003. The story starts off pretty much exactly where Reloaded ended. Um, the situation is dire, most of the Zion fleet has been destroyed, machines are on their way to the city. Morpheus and the other two um, crews are stranded outside, awaiting a message from the Oracle. When it finally comes, Neo goes into the Matrix one more time to consult her, and then comes up with a plan to stop the war with the machines for good. Although Agent Smith's growing power uh, within the Matrix will be a huge factor in all of this. So watching the film so closely after Reloaded, you can't help but notice um, the insistence on duality, uh, man versus machine, Neo versus Smith, uh, who essentially becomes the other, the opposite side of that same coin, um, Oracle versus the architect, but in, a, in the wider sense, also real world versus the Matrix. When Reloaded had most of its story happen within the Matrix, Revolutions takes place primarily outside of it, with a lot of focus being uh, put on the big Zion set piece. Now, seeing all three movies in quick succession makes it very clear that the sequels never lived up to the, to the same level of excellence set up by the first one. Uh, and what's interesting to me is uh, that Reloaded failed mostly because of its insistence on CG-heavy action, which has aged a lot. Whereas Revolutions tries once again to, to expand on the more philosophical side of the war, um, of, of, of the conflict between freedom and control. But it's not very adept at doing that either. I felt that the movie begins to crumble under the weight of what it's trying to say. Um, I mean, there's no denying that this time around a significant portion of the, uh, let's say, philosophical dialogue is nonsense. And long, pretty words try to hide the fact that the ambition is getting the best of the Wachowskis, um, which has often been the case for their later films as well. I also felt that the climax of this movie, which is of course meant to be a climax of the whole trilogy, is underwhelming. Um, first off, the battle in Zion is very, very long, and while it is constructed quite cleverly, uh, it doesn't look very exciting because of the dull colors and uniform visual palette and characteristics of the location. By establishing the real world um, as this crumbling ruin, grey-blue in color, washed off any warmth, the filmmakers sort of dug their own grave um, for the finale because when action starts to blow up it's just a lot of explodey, shooty, messy stuff on screen and it all looks largely the same. And secondly, when we move to the, to the final confrontation between Neo and Smith in The Matrix, the fight in the rain, it, it, it gets ridiculous at this point with all the flying around and punching one another through buildings. It's like watching late stage shonen anime where the power level of the characters is so big that it's impossible to relate to, and, and on the other hand, nobody is ever in real danger. They just punch each other through concrete walls and no, nothing seems to happen to the characters. Exactly the same thing happens here. Uh, after 15 minutes of this punching and kicking around, the fight ends in a way that makes you question why it even needed to happen in the first place. It's a badass moment for sure with Neo's response to, to Smith's question, you know, why do you do this, Mr. Anderson? Why? Why? because I choose to, uh, but it does ring a little bit hollow uh, with what happens next. And just to make it clear, I don't think it's a terrible movie. I, th I think it's, you know, it, it's sheer momentum from the previous two is enough to kind of push it across the finish line and wrap the trilogy in a satisfying way, because I actually really liked the ending after all the fighty stuff. And it was cool to realize how much the sequels drew from the Dune books, um, having read all of them since, uh, since last watching the Matrix films. Reloaded had that scene in Zion, particularly with Morpheus' speech, which was exactly like Paul's growing influence within the Fremen in the first book of Dune. Uh, whereas Revolution has the hero getting blinded at one point and yet still managing to see in, in a different way, which is essentially the main premise of, of Dune Messiah. So as a film, Revolutions is not great enough to live up to the first film's legacy, but also not terrible enough to tarnish it in the end. Uh, I thought it was a perfectly average film, to be honest, and it makes me think that even if the fourth movie ends up being disappointing, I'm sure it will at least be ambitious in one way or another.